Hi, uh, today I wanted to talk about one of the lesser known features that we've got in uh, one of our operating systems and that's uh, online uh, RAID level migration. Um, so if I scroll down a little bit you can sort of see the use case here. Um, so this allows you to change your RAID from a single drive um, up to RAID 1, so from having no redundancy to having a mirrored redundancy. Um, you can then add another drive um, and this time it will go from RAID 1 to RAID 5. This will now expand your capacity uh, and you can then also so go from RAID 5 to RAID 6 if you wish. So this is um, effectively just a tutorial on how to do that. Um, in this NAS it's a TVS H1288X. Um, I've got a couple of SSDs in the top which I'm just using as the system volume. We're going to ignore those. Um, down here I've got four 10 terabyte drives. They're showing up as 9.1. Um, we can see here that the use type on drive uh, in bay one here is data. The other three are written as free. So I'm not using those yet. I'm only using the one uh, with data on it. So we'll go and check that out. Um, storage pool one, we're just ignoring. That's the SSD system pool I created. So we're just going to concentrate on storage pool two here. Um, so if I right click on storage pool two and choose manage, uh, we've got a few options to do things in here. Now if I expand it we can see that RAID Group 2 only has one drive in it. So uh, SATA hard drive number one. Um, so it's giving me pretty much the full capacity there, 9 terabytes. I've put a 5 terabyte volume in it which is why the, uh, the volume is about halfway used. Now the scenario here would be that you could maybe only afford one drive when you got your NAS. So you'd put one drive in. Um, a little while later you want to add the, the resilience of some redundancy so you can add it. Now at the top here, we would normally pe see people clicking on expanding pool. So an expanding pool would allow you to grow the size of the pool. So if I was to click that, it only gives me one option with the current setup, which is to create and add a new RAID group. This isn't the option we're going to pick for this function. We're going to choose the extra manage button down below. Now down here, there's only one option highlighted with the configuration I've got set up right now, and that's migrate RAID group. And we can see down here the exact thing we were looking at the website, which was single to RAID 1. So that single drive to RAID 1, we're seeing the, uh, the same information here. Um, so it will say, please select at least one disk. So I'm going to go through this scenario that I've only um, purchased one more disk. So I'm going to pick hard drive 2, I'm going to tick that, and I'm going to click apply. So it's going to say all the data on that selected disk will be erased. So not the disk you've already got in your NAS. So if you've already got data on the disk in your NAS, it's not that drive. It's just the one you selected there, which is uh, in this case drive 2. So I'm going to say, yeah, I'm OK with that. So we'll, we'll click that. And what it's going to do now, um, this won't give us any extra capacity because we're effectively just going um, from having no RAID, just a single drive, and we're going to RAID 1, which is a mirror. So everything that was on drive 1 is now also going to be on drive 2. Um, so we can see that that started a, a rebuilding there, so it's it's setting this up, so it's got a resync speed. Um, this is going to take a few hours, I've, I've got some 10 terabyte disks here, so I'm just going to leave that. Um, and we'll come back to this screen um, once it's finished rebuilding, uh, and we'll carry on um, carry on from there. And then what we'll do is we'll add a third disk and we'll go from, from RAID 1 to RAID 5. So we'll just leave that there for now. Let, it, let that do its rebuild, but it was really that quick, just a couple of setting changes, um, and uh, it's off doing its thing now. Um, so we'll come back to this when that's done a rebuild. And with the power of editing, we can see that we now have um, a RAID 1 fully ready, uh, good to go, and it now has two drives um, inside of it. Um, so this did not add any extra capacity, so we can see we still have the same 9.09 .09 terabytes available in storage pool 2 that we had before. Um, but we do now have uh, resilience, we've got redundancy, so RAID 1 will now protect us. Um, if either of the drives fail, um, everything's still going to keep working, no data will be lost. So that's all, all done now and added. Now every drive we add from now on effectively um, can either add uh, capacity or uh, change the RAID mode again. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to click that same manage, and we're also now going to um, go migrate RAID group just like we did before. Um, this time we're going to select just one more drive again, um, so imagining some more time has gone on, you need more space, you've put another drive in, um, so we'll add the one. It's now going to go from RAID 1 to RAID 5. Um, so we're just going to apply that one um, and let that carry on. Um, so this is effectively we've gone from a single drive, uh, we went added a second drive to go to RAID 1, and now we're adding a third drive to go to RAID 5. Now this option is going to add extra capacity, so we're still going to keep redundancy so that 
OneDrive can fail, um, everything's still going to be okay, but we're effectively going to have the capacity available, available of two drives. Um, so we're going to let that do its migration, um, finish that RAID 5 rebuild. Um, it's going to take a little while, it'll be quicker than it says there, but it will go quicker than that. Um, but we'll come back when that's finished and we'll look at what options we have with the fourth drive that we may want to add into there. Um, so we'll come back when this is all ready and everything's healthy again. Okay. So we're now down to the uh, final step here with the uh, RAID level migration. We can see that it's uh, completed the switch up to RAID 5. So we can see RAID 5 there, everything's ready and we've got the three drives. Um, the total capacity now went up. So if you remember from adding the two drives, um, going from one drive to two drives, two drives didn't add any capacity, it just added redundancy. Adding the third drive and switching to RAID 5 has now added some extra capacity. And now we have um, effectively an option of what to do. We've got an extra drive inside the NAS. Um, so with this, we could do a couple of different things. We could com come up here um, and say that we wanted to expand the pool. So you can add disks to an existing RAID group. Um, so I could add a disk into that if I wanted. So if I was to click next here, tick the disk, it's going to give me a new capacity of 27.26, um, but that would be staying with the same uh, RAID, so that would be RAID 5. Um, another option we can do is switch up to RAID 6, which is the final step of the uh, online RAID level migration. Um, so here that would be in the manage option, you've got the option to migrate the RAID group, and the final option with that extra disk is to go from RAID 5 to RAID 6. Um, the difference between RAID 5 and RAID 6 is effectively two drives can fail and you lose uh, no data, so RAID 6 is the next upgrade that you can do, so you can tick that box and apply that if you want. Um, so once you've got the three drives in, anything you want to do beyond that, um, you get some choices, so simply keeping the same RAID mode of RAID 5, or you can switch up to RAID 6, and that's the final step of the uh, the online RAID level migration options. Um, hopefully you found that useful, um, but that's all the different steps that we've got. Um, but you can change it to RAID 6, the final step, if you wanted to jump up that far as well. Um, okay, if anyone has any questions, please do let us know in the comment section down below, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks a lot. Bye.